Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today I'd like to chat with you about why I modify my tarot decks, how it's actually a part of my personal practice, and why you might want to consider doing the same. So my decks only work for me when they resonate with me. Um, now by resonate with me, I'm talking about more than just the artwork, more than just the messages I receive, even more than just the interpretations in the little white book, all of which are of course important, but just as important to me is how the deck physically works for me, how useful it is. So these are things like the size of the cards, the card stock, the borders, the titles. So all of that should work and come together to create a cohesive whole in terms of a physical deck because this is a physical product. So sometimes when one of the elements doesn't resonate with me, like a super glossy cardstock or huge borders or multiple languages jam-packed on these cards, um, it can actually detract from the reading experience and hinder my ability to effectively work with these cards in a meaningful way. So by modifying these decks, by trimming down those bulky borders, removing distracting text, um, maybe adding some backing to super thin cardstock, it helps me create a deck that physically works for me. So what I'm basically doing is taking a deck that doesn't resonate with me in a certain way and altering it to fit my specific requirements and the preferences for the way I use my cards. Beyond the practicalities of physically modding a deck, there is this deeper connection that evolves when you work with your deck in this very personal and creative way. So whether you're simply looking to color your stark white edges or trim your borders or reback a deck or even repainting the cards, you are working with each and every card in a very profound way. Um, and I'm not just referring to the physical way we're changing the card, but the connection you have with your card. So if you're, say, removing borders on, on something like the Druid Craft, which is something that a lot of people have done, you're still having a very personal experience with this deck. You are working to add your energy, your effort, your intention to every card. So in this way, you're making a deeply personal deck because now instead of being this mass marketed thing or, or even indie marketed, you know, the stack of cards, this product, you have this deck that you have intentionally modified in a very personal and meaningful way. So even if everyone else has done the exact same modification of you, as you, um, their deck still isn't the same as yours. So the way we all go about it, the tools we use, the intentions behind our choices, even down to the experience of actually working with the cards in this really creative and expressive way is really unique to each of us. So even if you take two decks that have been modified in exactly the same way and look exactly the same on the surface, each reader will have had their own unique experience when crafting the deck. So it takes a lot of time to modify a deck, right? Like if you're trimming, you have to trim 78 cards. When you're edging, just like trimming, you have to do one card at a time. So that's a lot of time spent with your deck. You're looking at the cards, you're looking at the images, you're seeing it from all different perspectives. I see this as time this time spent as kind of showing my appreciation and my gratitude for my decks, um, as well as making it a physical tool that works really well for me. So in fact, some of my favorite and most sentimental and meaningful decks are the ones that I've put some serious time and effort into modifying. So when you spend that much time working on each and every card, you build a pretty tight bond with them. Like I'm actually really attached to this deck now. So I know that there are some people out there that are adamantly opposed to modifying a deck. So I've heard people talk about various concerns about defiling the cards or it being an insult to the card creator. Um, but I truly see modifying a deck as this beautiful collaborative and personal experience. So let's talk about from a very practical standpoint. When you purchase a deck, it is yours. Um, the creator has given their permission, released and sold their artwork to be distributed in this way. So in my opinion, my personal opinion, I don't believe that modifying a deck is in any way disrespectful to the creator or in any way defiling the deck. Um, in fact, I like to think of it as sort of this, you know, collaborative process, you and the deck creator working together to create this beautiful new infusion of life for this deck that you now own. So um, I think another concern that a lot of people have is that they feel like they're doing something wrong if they modify their decks. Um, again, it's your deck, so you're not doing anything wrong with it regardless of what you do to it. If those borders bug you, take them off. If the cards are too big, trim them down. 
Um, you know, if you if you want to make the edges pretty, mark them up. If you want to draw clothes on naked bodies or change skin tones, add in your own symbols, whatever it is that helps you to connect with those cards, I say do it. They are your cards and you should use them however you want and work with them in a meaningful way for you. And if you love your cards just the way they are and they work perfectly for you, that's fantastic too. I'm not saying that you have to modify every deck in order to have a personal relationship with it. Please do not mistake that. What I really want to get across is that there is no deck police out there. No one is going to come hunt you down and tell you that the choices you've made with your cards are wrong. And if they do, well, oh well. <laughs> like, it's not their deck, so they don't have to like the choices that you've made. But this is not to say that there are not pitfalls to modifying your decks, because there certainly can be. Um, one of the biggest concerns that um, comes up in modifying your cards is the possibility that you are in some way going to ruin your deck. Now, to be honest with you, I've ruined my fair share of decks. There is a definite learning curve, and I think it's important to um, have a little practice before you sit down and start chopping off borders or even coloring edges. Like techniques vary, tools vary, um, and sometimes despite your best planning efforts, things can go wrong. I mean, in fact, I have several upcoming videos that address these issues in further detail um, to help you avoid making some of the mistakes that I have. If you're scared to do those physical modifications, um, like I said, practice first. It's really not as hard as some people think. You can practice on a cheap deck of playing cards or an inexpensive deck you don't mind replacing. Um, so give it a go. You might totally hate it and it might be something that you will never do again. But then again, you know, like me, you might find the experience that modifying a deck offers this whole other level to your tarot practice and really helps you bond with your decks. So really the bottom line is your decks only work for you if they work for you, right? So don't be afraid to modify your decks and make them your own and make them work in a way that resonates with your practice. It makes the deck so uniquely yours and you can help forge a truly deeply impersonal bond with those cards. So for me, modifying my decks is first and foremost about making a deck physically work for me. But more importantly, it's really an extension of my practice. It's an, it's an exercise in bonding with my cards. It's a way for me to put my energy and my love into a deck. It's how I create a deep and meaningful connection with my cards. I hope you found this video on deck modification as personal practice, informative and entertaining. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.